Uh, yes, so we will uh, talk about modeling transformations today. So we are moving things around now uh, after dealing with rendering up to uh, this class. From now on, we will also uh, do some movements in our scenes, not just rendering. And to that effect, we need to learn transformations. Uh, so here is the first set of transformations we will see. Uh, it will be modeling transformations that uh, move the models from their own local coordinates uh, to, to the world coordinates where everything is organized. Uh, so again, by the way, I am Yusuf Sayyidullah and these are the slides from my colleague Oz. Uh, in our current topic, modeling transformations. Uh, so every model has its own, its own world, like it is uh, designed without any other models in consideration of VC. It, they are designed in isolation uh, and they make up the uh, shape the way they are. Then we need to move them to the world, to our world. Uh, and then later next week, we will actually see how to move this world arrangement into the camera uh, space, into the viewing coordinates. So currently we will just, uh, today, this week, we will just deal with uh, the first part, which is from modeling coordinates to the world coordinates. Uh, and we will, be using affine transformations that uh, preserve lines and parallelism. So lines remain lines after a, a fine transformation and also parallel lines remain parallel. Uh, however, the distances may not be preserved. Like in this example, uh, we see an affine transformation uh, uh, so here the distances are not preserved uh, and angles also may not be preserved. So we, do, we don't really uh, go for, for this preservation. Uh, but what we need is lines should remain lines and parallels should remain parallels. And these are achieved by uh, translation rotation and scaling. These three are the uh, atomic basic transformations. And then some sources show shearing or skewing as other affine transformations, but actually they are just a, a combination of the existing rotation and scales. So that's why uh, we should consider affine transformations as translation, rotation, and scale. Also reflection is also an affine transformation that can be achieved using this stuff. Uh, yes, and we typically uh, transform the vertices that make up our mesh models in our scenes, uh, or the 3D points, or in 2D, we have 2D points, 2D vertices. And ad in addition to the vertices, we also transfer uh, some directional vectors like the surface normals. This, the second part is optional uh, because once you transform your vertices into your new configuration, you can recompute your normals using just a cross product, as you know, for instance, for this uh, basic triangle example, the no new normal will be computed by defining these two uh, vectors using a reference vertex and two other vertices of the triangle. And you make a dot product of A and B, and it gives you the current normal, which is perpendicular to this new configuration. Uh, but to avoid the dot pro uh, cross product operations, you can just uh, apply your transformation to this normal as well. Okay, so let's uh, talk about translation. Actually, the main theme of today is to uh, understand these three transformations in detail in 2D and in 3D. So we start with 2D uh, and we see uh, 
this equation for point P, uh, uh, that is represented as X and Y top tuple, uh, we want the new moved point P prime, which has X prime and Y prime. So X prime is essentially the X here plus whatever TX is the movement in X direction. So I will move in horizontal direction. Then I will make a vertical move, TY amount. And I add it to the original Y coordinate to get my new Y prime coordinate. So Y prime is Y plus TY. Uh, if we represent this, uh, the point as a vector and the transformation as a vector, then you just need a simple addition, right? Because X prime, this guy is equal to X plus TX and Y prime is Y plus TY. So later we will realize that summation here is not compatible with other operations. So we will see how to convert this into a multiplication, matrix multiplication uh, using homogeneous coordinates. But currently, all it does is it moves this point to here. And if you have a model, like not just a point, but a model consisting of points, uh, then you essentially apply the same transformation to all the points. So this vertex, this vertex, this vertex, and they just follow your order uh, and you apply the same triangulation or uh, whatever here. So you get your surface model or your uh, curve model in 2D. Rotation is a different action as we know from the word. We turn things around uh, with rotation, whereas with translation we just uh, move them. Uh, we need an angle of rotation, which is theta in 2D, uh, because the axis of rotation, there is no axis to consider. So we just need a theta uh, as the parameter of rotation. Uh, and actually, there is also a second parameter, which is a pivot point, rotation point. So I will move this object around this black point, which is specified by X R and Y R. This movement, uh, as you can see, with an angle of A, not theta, but anyway, it brings you here. <clears throat> However, if you have moved the object around origin, it will have a different output. So this uh, rotation point is important. Uh, so let's see what X prime and Y prime, the new locations of your P prime point are. Uh, for simplicity, assume that the uh, pivot point, the rotation point uh, is origin zero, zero. Then if you look at your original point P, which has X and Y coordinates, uh, uh, what I have in my, in this version is P prime is, I have X prime and Y prime. So what is uh, X prime? Let's uh, try to see that. So this is uh, going to be your total angle. If you form a right triangle here, then X prime is actually this distance, right? So it is different than this X. Okay, so this is X. And how I compute this is uh, this angle. So cosine of this angle is the red length over the radius r, or the distance of P prime from the origin R. So then it follows that uh, X prime is R times this cosine of this angle. So that when I divide it by R, r I have uh, cosine of this angle. Uh, and then by some trigonometric action, this summation actually unrolls into this version. And for the Y component, I need this over this. So I, uh, what is sine of phi plus theta? 
it is equal to this amount over this amount. So then this amount is just equal to R times sine of phi plus theta. Uh, when I divide it by R, R goes out and I have my sine of this angle as desired. So uh, I have this equation, but it is messy. I can make it even more uh, simpler by observing the following. So this angle, actually the rotation angle here is theta. So what is this angle? Phi, it is the uh, original orientation. It is the or orientation of the original point x, y. So in other words, I can actually define x in terms of phi only because there is no rotation currently. There is no theta to consider. So in terms of phi, actually the x component here, this distance is equal to what? It is r times cos theta. So that uh, this length over r, the distance of p from origin gives me uh, cosine of this angle phi. Uh, so x is equal to r times cos phi. Notice one thing that after rotation, this distance is preserved. So it is the beauty of rotation. That's why I use the same r here and here. It is in the definition of rotation. Rotation preserves distances, unlike scaling, for instance. Uh, okay, so similarly, this height, let's talk about this vertical height. Uh, it is the y component of my original point P, actually. So sine of phi is equal to this distance over r. So then this distance is equal to r times sine of phi. Then if I go to the original equation I have derived before, derived before, uh, then I just plug, replace r cos theta with x having this. And similarly, r sine theta is just y, which is a good thing because now I have a simpler uh, equation to deal with. And actually, this is such a nice equation that I can represent this as a matrix sum. So if I put these trigonometric terms into my rotation matrix, cosine, minus sine, sine and cosine, and then I hit this with the original point x and y, which is pi, by the way, p, 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 by the way, and this is r. So I end up with, so if you make this uh, multiplication, what gives is uh, the x prime is the rotated new point and y prime. So what is x prime? It's fits to this definition. Let's verify. X prime is equal to cosine theta times X minus sine theta times Y, just like here. Similarly, what is Y prime? I will go with the second row because Y is at the second row in the output. Uh, X sine theta times X, this term, plus cos theta times Y, this term. Right, so this is how your rotation matrix comes to your uh, life. Uh, we can consider a more generic scenario, like what if the rotation around point, the pivot point is not the uh, origin, then nothing really changes actually. Uh, all these previous equations are, they hold, but just notice the following, this distance uh, uh, the distance of P here, it, it is defined based on this original uh, X and Y axis, right? So this uh, coordinate system. So actually to, to go here, I need to, uh, uh, I have X here, which defines this point X. And by subtracting the references, R component, I have my X minus X R for this term. Uh, similarly, for this thing, I have to subtract Y. And now I have the same configuration as here. Uh, the only change is instead of using X directly, I will be using, it is gone, but uh, X minus X reference. 
and the rest is the same. And additionally, I will also have to add this uh, translation to the end result. Now let's uh, revisit the translation uh, because as you can see, rotation is very cool. I can write it as a matrix multiplication. I want that to hold for translation as well. And to do that, I need to introduce a third coordinate in my 2D uh, world, which is the homogeneous coordinate. Uh, so you add an extra coordinate in your, if you are in 3D, then uh, homogeneous coordinate will be your fourth coordinate. So notice the following. Uh, I want this to hold. So P bar P prime is equal to some translation matrix times P, just like I have used rotation here before. I want to make it similar to the rotation case. Okay, so P bar is equal to that. But unfortunately, with our uh, old expression, I can't just multiply T with P because first of all, they, the dimensions even don't match. Right, so it is two by one times two by one undefined. Uh, so, but I need to remember this thing. I want x prime to be x plus tx. So then why don't I just, let me clear this. Why don't I just uh, put my x and y here? So the point to be moved and put one as my homogeneous coordinate, just one is the homogeneous coordinate <clears throat> uh, in this context. Then I will get the X as it is by one. And notice that this is always identity by definition of the translation matrix. So I get the X as desired. And additionally, I get nothing from the, uh, y component zero times y, and I get all the tx to be applied to my x, thanks to this one. So this is the cool uh, situation in the end. Similarly, for the y prime, which I am writing here, I need only one y. So to get that, I don't get any x, I get one y using that identity part. and I also need to add ty. So this will hit this one, third column, third row, ty. Uh, and to make the system stable and uh, feasible, uh, this last line should also be mandatory because I want one equal to one here. So this, if you, uh, multiply this thing, you end up with one here, right? Zero of X, zero Y, and one times one is one. So this is your output in homogeneous coordinates. Notice that homogeneous coordinates is always one in the output as well as in the input. So then you can kindly discard this in your application because you all have already obtained your 2D new coordinate, which is X plus TX and Y plus TY. Uh, so, uh, I use the, I don't need homogeneous coordinates for rotations, but uh, I want to keep everything three by three because later on, as we will see in a second, I will multiply transform translation by rotation and maybe later by scaling and maybe I will do another rotation, maybe do another rotation, then do another translation. So I want to do all these transformations in order uh, and I will apply them to my point P. So then since this is a three by three matrix, the original rotation is two by two. I can't multiply two by two with three by three as you know from linear algebra. So I also need to convert all these guys to three by three. So there will be a redundancy, but uh, I can't avoid that. Uh, I have to do that three by three, so that in the end, I have a final uh, three by three matrix hitting my three by one 
point producing uh, my new transform three by one point called p prime. So then this is the uh, for the homogeneous version of the rotation matrix. You just had it with zero zero and zero zero, and this part must be one again because homogeneous coordinates. Uh, will give one in the output as well. So the last row is always zero, zero, one, even for scaling. By the way, I haven't shown you scaling yet, but uh, scaling is this. So do, do we have a slide about that? Uh, yeah, so sorry about the order, but what scaling does is uh, I actually, I don't have a special thing about it, but it is again trivial. So let's write it here. All scaling does is uh, the new x prime. I want it to be scaled by sx. So sx scaled version of x. Similarly, y prime is going to be sy times y. So how do I get this? again? So this is the matrix you need a diagonal matrix again with zero zero one for homogeneous stuff uh, so if you hit this with your x y you will and again homogeneous coordinate one in the end uh, so the output will be also in homogeneous coordinates so the last row will be one uh, just verify it zero x zero y one by one one and here i get sx times x because this hits this and this zero is also very important because I need to disable the effect of this homogeneous coordinate in my scaling output. So I have all my essential uh, transformations I have mentioned in the very beginning, my translation, my rotation, my scaling. I can use their combinations to get skewing, shearing, reflections, anything. So about the combinations, or we can also call it composition of uh, transformations. <coughs> so let's begin that discussion. We have a composite transformation if it consists of uh, two or more transformation transformations, which means uh, that uh, the object is transferred multiple times. First with M1, and then with M2. So we read this from right to left, be careful about this. M1 is first applied to point and the transform point is transformed again using M2. Uh, so you may need to apply this to all the points of your mesh model. Like you have 10,000 points. Then for each of the 10,000 models and points, you will be doing this multiplication, M2 times M1, M2 times M1, uh, 10,000 times. I can avoid that thanks to the composition because this M without subscript has the same effect as M2 times M1. I just make that multiplication only once and store it in my M matrix and then apply it to 10,000 times to each of the P, to each of the points. So this is one beauty of using uh, composite transformations. It is efficient handling of uh, points in your scene. Uh, so let's do a composition then. I will first move this object to origin. This, this, uh, so this part of it, I will move it to origin. So by subtracting, subtracting three from X coordinate and two from Y coordinates for all the points. So it comes here. Then I do my rotation here, 30 degree, it rotates here. And then I also do scaling before that, then do the rotation and then move the output back to this original location or to another location to the desired point. Another composition example is my point P, I will move it twice, okay? First, I will move it using this transformation. 
So if it is my laser pointer, first I will apply it uh, on the translation so it will move to this letter M. And then I will make a second transformation which moves it to this point N. Okay, so from here I go M and so then uh, you can uh, you just apply our regular translation matrix uh, and you make the multiplication and see the end result actually. What you end up here is you add the X component of this movement from here to M and X component of this movement from M to N. Actually, you can just add those components. It will be your final movement in X direction. So you can also see this in this output matrix. But again, you never memorize a composition output. All you have to memorize is the uh, translation format as well as rotation format and scaling format. Then once you multiply them together, you really don't have to memorize what your output will look like. Similarly here, if you will do as two, a pair of scale, uh, rotations, first with phi, then with theta. Uh, so you can just use this matrix uh, with two parameters in it. But again, don't worry about it. Uh, you just do your rotation with theta and the same pattern with phi instead of theta. Uh, yeah, so it leads to this output. For uh, scaling, again, as you expect, you will scale twice, first with S1 and with S2. So essentially in that you will have S1 times S2 amount of scaling. <clears throat> Uh, so let's see examples about rotation around a pivot point, around the rotation point. Uh, so I want to uh, rotate this guy uh, around this region. Uh, so I, like uh, while fixing this point, so I will nail it from here to the wall and I will rotate it around this. So in the end, I will have something like this upside down effect, right? upside down after 180 degree rotations, rotation. But if I don't uh, care about the pivot point, by default, I rotate around the origin, then you will have this counterclockwise movement. Maybe for 180 rotation, it will come from here to all the way here, right? So your object will be here in the end, which is not desired. Again, this depending on your application, maybe it is desired, but it is good to have this flexibility. You can rotate this uh, around any point that we call pivot point. So to do that, uh, the rotation matrix I have here, it assumes that the pivot is in the origin, right? So remember our first derivation this matrix I am using, which assumes that the pivot point is in the origin. So otherwise it doesn't work. So the pivot in the in arbitrary points case gives you this uh, output, which cannot be represented as a matrix multiplication in our system. So, but this is very cool, I can do it. So then to rotate around an arbitrary axis, arbitrary point, I have to move that point to the origin first because now I know how to do my rotation. So now do the rotation then with theta, which makes this upside down, and then move it back to where it was so that I have this out. So this is the heart of uh, today's class actually. Doing these transformations in order is very useful. Uh, and here I have a combination of translation and rotation, not even scaling, but this is already very common in computer graphics. Uh, again, so let's, now let's see the matrices explicitly. First, I will M1 is the movement. By the way, this is XR and YR, right? These are positive uh, uh, coefficients in my X and Y axis. 
However, I use minus XR to cancel that positive XR and bring me to zero and minus YR. So that is the minus version is used in the translation. Then you are in such a configuration that your rotation point is in zero, zero origin. And the other points are somewhere else, but I don't care because all I care about is the pivot point. Now I can do my rotation based on pivot in the origin case. Again, this will uh, move all the points, including the pivot point. It will actually stay in the origin because zero, zero times anything is zero, zero. But other points will move as well. And now actually this, well, this is what happens after rotation. Then I undo the first minus translation using the plus version of the XR and YR. So all you need to do is to compose this matrix M1 times M2 times M3. And that's it actually. Uh, let's see a different example. Now I will scale around a fixed point. I don't call it pivot point. Pivot is a term reserved for rotations. Uh, fixed point. So I will scale this uh, while keeping this fixed. So this will be my end result. Uh, and again, if you recall the SX, SY, this tactic, it works for the scale link when the pivot, the scale, fixed point is in the origin. That's why you move it to origin with minus stuff, do your scaling with your known pattern and undo the first translation. Again, you can memorize this fixed point version uh, of the scaling, but unnecessary. All you have to know is this logic. Order is very important. So from, I told you specifically to apply it from right to left although we write it in different order. First M1, then M2, then M3. So here, for instance, let's see the order dependence here. If I first do the rotation around this point, then the red comes to this dashed configuration. Then I do the translation. So this is my final output, uh, the, uh, solid lines. Now I will first do the same amount of translation. Okay, same amount, but order is different. So it comes here. Then I will do the same amount of rotation. So this angle and this angle is the same. And from here, if I rotate this dash triangle around pivot, uh, alpha degree, it will come to this uh, configuration, which is different than the one I have obtained with a different order of transformations. So I conclude that matrix composition is not commutative. You cannot say that AB is equal to BA. So be careful when designing your sequence of transformations. Reflection is a special scaling. Okay, so again, as I mentioned before, using the atomic operations, scaling, rotation, and translation, I can create all others, like reflection. Uh, I need uh, an axis of reflection. So if I will reflect around X axis, all the axis will be the same. So one for the component that will hit the uh, X. Again, remember, I will apply this matrix, reflection matrix to X, Y, and one homogeneous coordinate. The output will be in homogeneous coordinates. So the last row will be one because zero, zero, one times X, Y, one is one. And now be careful, I keep the X as is. So one times X, X, and Y, all the Y's, I get their negative, negated version. So like if this is five, that will be minus five. So minus y. And similarly, if you do your uh, scaling uh, reflection around y-axis, then you will preserve y-coordinates and uh, scale uh, the axis with minus ones. Again, it doesn't shrink or grow because I am using ones here. If you use like minus two, it will also have a uh, enlargement effect. 
but in reflection, it is not in the definition of reflection. So you never use a value other than one uh, and minus one. And this is a reflection around this kind of, like it uh, negates all the X and Y's. Shearing or skewing, it is like uh, deforming the shape like uh, you do to a deck of cards. You shift uh, the slices, can be in X and Y direction. And again, it is defined like this. So if I am doing uh, a shearing of this example, like here, let's focus on this guy. Uh, Notice that y coordinates are the same. So for this point, if y is uh, 0 0.8, it will still be 0 0.8 in this configuration. So I will keep y prime equal to the original y. But the x component, it moves to the right. So I add something to my x component. And that addition depends on your current height. The higher you are, the more x uh, delta you will add to your x. So that's why you have this shearing coefficient and you don't, don't just apply it uh, as is you apply it uh, by y in uh, with y, by pairing it with the y uh, coordinate so how can you hit uh, this coefficient this uh, parameter with y then you put this into this special location so this is not a diagonal matrix anymore uh, you uh, so again to verify i will hit this with y and once for the homogeneous because output will also have one yeah so this is how you handle your skewing or shearing uh, and we can now talk about uh, 3d extension of all this stuff uh, so what is happening here? Uh, first, I have a third axis in my system now, uh, and that will be perpendicular to the existing two axes. So this is the usual uh, representation. So the one we are familiar with, X and Y like this uh, are like in 2D, and the third component will be perpendicular to X, Y. And here comes the right-hand rule. Uh, so to define the third, axis that is perpendicular to both n x and y i uh, point my right hand in the direction of x and bend my four fingers uh, towards y then wherever your thumb points is your z direction so that would be in this case sticking out of the screen if you uh, so this is the usual orientation but all these other two actually give the same coordinate system. It is just the rotated version of this. To verify it quickly, um, move your, uh, so direct your hand in the direction of X, bend it towards Y, so then your Z will go to right. Here, move your hands out of the screen, point it out of the screen in the direction of X, bend it towards Y, then your Z will be thumbs up. Uh, so it is the right-handed coordinate system we are going to use. And in this system, uh, so our previous translation is just extended. Uh, remember the format. I need identity here. Zero ones in 2D. And again, by definition, last row is 0, 0, 001 for homogeneous stuff. And I put Tx and Ty. So this is a 2D uh, uh, translation matrix. Uh, here in 3D, I keep the same logic. So this part will be a 3 by 3 identity. This part will be a copy paste. But now I will support four dimensions because the fourth one is the homogeneous one. Hence, I need 0, 0, 001, not 0, 0, 001. One zero 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 one I need, uh, and this part again. This is from our previous pattern. This just I support Z now. So essentially, Z prime is equal to 
z times so this one hits this z z times one times tz so z prime is equal to z plus tz so in this example i apply this to all the points uh, and in this case the translation tx is like here ty is here and maybe some tz is also like here so you will hit here for the rotation uh, i need an axis of rotation so before i in 2d i just need an angle of rotation and also a pivot point here uh, i will also need a pivot point uh, later uh, but let me first give you uh, the three special and easy to write cases of rotation so i will use them in my matrices later so these are special case rotations rotation around x axis as you can see x points do not change again like in the reflection case uh, but y like this top y is now bottom so y component and z component they may change Similarly, for y-axis rotation, y's are the same heights, but x and z can change. And for z-axis rotation, uh, the z, the depth values will be the same. The other x and y are likely to change. Uh, so with a positive angle of rotation, I am defining a counterclockwise, as you can see, counterclockwise rotation. So this is Again, extended version of the 2D rotation. Remember the format cos minus sin, sin cos. So just make a quick recap of our cos minus sin, sin cos. Okay, so it is uh, like that in this configuration because I will rotate. Uh, actually, not this one I am talking about x-axis rotation so this case so this case remember x coordinate doesn't change so one will hit the x and the all zeros will cancel the other terms so uh, x prime is equal to x and y and z i will use the rotations from my 2d derivations these are basically cos and minus signs uh, and Rotation, so another kind of special restricted rotation is rotation around an axis parallel to a known axis like x-axis or so this, I will rotate around the red axis here, but this is not that arbitrary because it is parallel to a known uh, axis so like x-axis. What you need to do is, so this, axis red axis it passes through a point called ypzp actually it will always be ypzp along this line as you can see uh, i will only change the x component so in the end i want this output okay so if i rotate this uh, object around the x it will like move somewhere here right it will rotate uh, with a wider effect but I want rotation around this. Uh, so how to do that? I will first move this red axis on top of my X axis. I can do it extremely easily because of the special case that red is parallel to X. So all I need to do is, if I move this point Y, P, Z, P to origin, and that translation, if I apply to all other points, all other points will go to X axis. And this point will go to zero, zero, zero. And again, since this is parallel, all other points will hit exactly on the uh, to the uh, x-axis. So that is the first transformation. Then move it using minus negated version of the y, p, and z, p coordinates. Then, since I am in x-axis, I can apply my x-axis rotation, which which is well defined here. Like just you can memorize. If you will memorize something, you must memorize uh, rotation by x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. 
you can have the same pattern anyway. You just put one for the current axis to prevent its update. So let's see visually what is happening. I will do that like 90 degree rotation, I think here after the translation, I am here. And in the third figure, I do the rotation. So I am here. Now I move the axis back to the original location, like here, from here to here, the red axis. To do that, I will apply the uh, negated version of the first transformation, like the, to undo that, which will be minus minus yp, it is plus yp. And so this effectively moves all the points on the red line. I am not that interested in the visualization of the red line, however. So just apply the same moment to all the other model points, then you will see that this moves closer to you. And that would be your output. Now let's do a more general case, actually the uh, last case, the most generic case. So we need to handle that because in reality, we may want to rotate an object around any axis, so arbitrary axis. But the logic is the same. So this idea will extend smoothly to this arbitrary case. What you do is you uh, translate the object so that the rotation axis, the black axis here, passes through the origin. Then rotate this black on top of uh, to a well-known axis, major axis like Z axis. Then make the specified rotation on the Z axis using the memorized RZ. And then reverse the uh, first rotation that snapped the uh, black to the Z and then reverse the translation which uh, puts it back. Uh, actually here, this is an even better visualization of the same concept. So assume that this is the axis around which I will rotate my object. So first translate it to the origin. It is enough to translate one endpoint P1 that defines this axis. P1 in the origin now, effectively the uh, axis is in the origin, we say it like that. Now snap it to one of the known axes like Z. Uh, and to do that, I will first snap it here and then rotate it here. So there is a two other, uh, there are two other steps for that, but it can be done. So now in here, I do my regular Z axis rotation and the remaining two steps are the undo actions. First, I undo such that this axis is in this core configuration above from step one, then make another undoing to move it back to where it was before. So these are the five steps. Now let's be more uh, concrete. So the axis of rotation goes from P1 to P2, I call it V. And since this is a direction, I will use the unit vector of it by scaling, uh, dividing it with uh, the length of it. So the magnitude of this u vector is one. Translate to the origin. Uh, again, so x1, y1, z1 is the coordinate, are the coordinates of p1, at this point, p1, x1, y1, z1. So if I subtract x1, y1, z1 from everyone in my life, then that P1 specifically goes to zero, zero, and others, they go somewhere else uh, based on this translation. Now I align you, now that I am at this second figure, now I will align this with Z axis, okay? To do that, I will first uh, lay it down to XZ plane using a rotation around x-axis, be careful, rotation around x-axis using alpha. And then I will do rotation around y-axis using this amount, beta. Again, rotation around x and rotation around y are known. So I don't really memorize any further thing. All I need here is some math to compute this alpha and beta. 
actually I don't really compute alpha and beta explicitly because in the memorized rotations here, I just need their cosine version and sine version. Okay, I don't need uh, alpha or theta direct. I need cosine theta or cosine sine. Actually, I will do RZ, so I need uh, this configuration, but still cosine and sine, I need them. And to get them, actually, uh, so we use uh, trigonometry using the coordinates of the uh, normalized uh, arbitrary vector V. Uh, so cosine of alpha is actually C over D. Okay, so just plug C over D here without even knowing what alpha is. Similarly, cosine of beta is derived uh, like this and put those versions here. And in the end, I have this system. Uh, axis in the origin, passing through the origin, then do x-axis rotation to snap it to the uh, xz plane, then y-axis rotation to snap it to the z-axis, do the z-axis rotation, then undo the first snap and undo the second snap and undo the first translation. Actually, theta, this is the only input to your system as well as the rotation axis, of course. But this is the actual desired rotation. These others are just to satisfy uh, certain conditions so that I can apply RZ. Uh, so this is the common method. Alternatively, since you have U, you can put U into a, a different coordinate system, U, V, W. So this is different than X, Y, Z, but it will be similar in the sense that these uh, axes, directions will be uh, mutually perpendicular. And to achieve that, we use uh, like given u, I create v uh, by just setting one of the components to zero and shifting uh, the locations and making one minus. And the logic here is uh, v must be perpendicular to u. So the dot product u dot v must be zero, right? So what is the dot product? This first component multiply, add it with this multiplication, add it with this multiplication. So here you see that a minus b minus ab plus plus ab plus zero is zero. So v is, uh, I constructed a v in such a good way that it is perpendicular to u. Then you can also construct your W, and here comes your cross product, the normal computation rule. You do your right hand rule, uh, make your right hand uh, look in the direction of U, and bend your four fingers towards V. And then your uh, thumb sticks out of the screen. That would be W in this case, which is U cross V. Uh, so now that I have two different coordinate systems, there is a nice way of uh, mapping one on top of the other. Again, it is because these are all uh, perpendicular axes in their own coordinate frame. Uh, so essentially what you need to do is you uh, put these new axes as columns to this uh, M matrix um, and that would be the matrix. Actually, that would be the inverse of it. So you put your UX, UI, UZ as a row, similarly your V axis as a row and W axis as a row, and you just multiply everything with this M matrix, that's it. Uh, then you overcome all your uh, previous uh, multiple rotations. Okay, uh, so for the scaling then, uh, it is relatively simple after all these rotation actions, but still let's take a quick look. Uh, I want X to be SX times X. So I need this diagonal structure. Again, if I keep all of them the same, then I have a uniform scaling, uniform in all directions. Uh, but 
in even in this example, I see some non-uniformity. So like I scale more in SY direction, apparently here. It seems at least that way. And for scaling with respect to a fixed point, you first move that fixed point to origin, do your scaling, which is uniform in this case, apparently, then move it back to the original location. So this input becomes this output. Reflection uh, is defined over major planes. Now that I am in 3D, I don't, I can't reflect over a line. It is undefined. I will reflect over a plane. So if that is your plane, X, Y plane, then you will keep all your X and Y's the same. So X will be hit by one and Y will be hit by one. And you will negate the sign of X, uh, Z, sorry, as you see also in this example. And similarly for uh, Y, Z plane reflections and X, Z plane reflections. How about reflection over an arbitrary plane? Let's think about this. This can be interesting to think about. So since in 3D, I can define any plane and I can reflect it over that. So let's think about the solution. The solution can be like this. That plane is defined by a point on that plane and the normal that defines the plane, a point and the normal. So move that point to origin, okay? Then rotate the plane such that it aligns with like X, Y plane. So how can you do that? You can do that by uh, using the normal of the original plane, which is now here in the origin. You like, in this case, you snap it to the Z axis, then you have this plane, right? So do your reflection around uh, X, Y plane, using this known memorized matrix and then undo just like we have done in the previous rotations what is undo you undo step two and then which is about uh, normal rotation and you undo step one which is about translation okay so these steps uh, you will take to uh, handle reflection over an arbitrary plane uh, and another issue to consider is transformation of normals. Again, as I told you in the very beginning, once a triangle or a surface piece is uh, transformed, uh, its normal may change. So one way is uh, to recompute your vectors here based on your reference vertex and two other vertices and do your cross product of A cross B and recompute your normal from scratch. But cross product in the background makes lots of multiplications and additions. So to prevent that, we may want to transform this normal with a matrix, just like I have transformed the points with matrices. But can I just do the matrix use the matrix uh, used in the transformation of the points i can do that if my transformation is a rotation or translation so let's assume that you have this normal and you you will translate your triangle to somewhere here then you can just do that translation and this is your new normal right it is just at a different rotation or if this is a triangle like this, and you rotate it like this, like 90 degrees, uh, then your uh, uh, normal, you can also apply that 90 degree rotation to this normal. So see, this is perpendicular to this one. Uh, then you are done. But with scaling, there's a problem that I demonstrate here. So what if take this object, which is a line, okay? Like this is your pencil, maybe whatever. Uh, it's normal is this by Pythagorean rule. This is a 45 degree line by right hand triangles, etc. right triangles. Uh, so if I scale this non-uniformly, again, with uniform scaling, you are still good. Actually, you are not good because your normal will not be unit anymore since you will scale it. So 
uh, even with uniform scaling UVA problems. So scaling is problematic for normal transformation, okay? Here, I have even a non-uniform scaling, like I scale the X component three times more than the Y component. Actually, I don't scale the Y at all. So this becomes like this. If I apply the same three times scaling to X, so one over square root two becomes three over square root two, and no update to Y component, and no update uh, to the Z uh, component, homogeneous component. So, but this doesn't work. If you draw this with three over square root of two, you end up with this, you can verify this, which is obviously not perpendicular to this uh, line, right? So it doesn't qualify as a normal. So something went wrong. Also, uh, other than perpendicular, see, uh, there is this scaling. So it's the size, the length of this vector will not be one anymore. It is definitely not a unit vector. So we are failing from two aspects. So my so-called unit, uh, my so-called normal vector is not perpendicular and also it is not unit. So it is not a directional vector. So it fails. I need a different transformation then. Uh, and here, I repeat that rotation and translation has no problems, but since at some point I may be combining these transformations together, remember T times R times R times R times T times S times T times R times blah, blah. So at some point S can be entering to this combination. It is just arbitrary, it can come. That's why you have to uh, handle it from scratch. So you, you cannot separate the cases. And here is how I handle it. Actually, it depends on this dot product again. So for if N is my uh, normal to be transformed and uh, V is a vector on my plane from A to B, then N dot V is zero, right? That means dot product because uh, they are perpendicular, the scalar projection of N on B or the scalar projection of V on N is zero. So that is uh, N dot V is zero. And by the way, after the transformation, I have V prime, the vector will transform conveniently. And the new N prime that I'm looking for, uh, in the end, I have to set, it has to satisfy this because still this is the vector on the transform plane and this is the normal of the transform plane. So by definition, their dot product should be zero again. Now let's open this V bar, V prime, which is the transformed version of V by the transformation M. Again, I cannot use the M for the normal transformation as we have seen with this unfortunate example. So let's do more action. I cannot do n times n, I will do z times n. So z is different than n. Uh, so let's see what z is. And here is how I compute that. Remember n dot m prime dot v prime uh, is equal to zero in the end, right? So what is that? Uh, I can rewrite the dot product using transpose, right? Because uh, remember the dot product is uh, a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 blah blah it goes like any k dimensions so if i uh, remember original points are in columns like b1 and b2 this is uh, one vector so if i take the transposed version if i make it like lie down horizontally, then I have this output uh, automatically like A1, A2. So I have to take the transpose of the first A, in this case, this is A, this is B, uh, right? So this is equal to this thing then, I think it is clear. So now with that, I will replace this V prime with the transformed version of M, uh, V, MV. 
and then uh, this equation must have hold in the beginning as we know n t times v is equal to zero so let's assume that i put something here that also has this m in it and i also put uh, a z here so this must be one uh, identity right because because what i need n t and transpose times v equal to zero and i can satisfy i cannot satisfy it if this is not identity it will give a different result so it has to be identity then the rest is simple logic since this is equal to identity then z is uh, i first lose the transpose by taking transpose then take the inverse so that would be your answer this is what you will use to transform your norms and with that uh, my discussion on uh, modeling transformations is done uh, for the rest of I, the uh, slide set i put my own slides covering quaternions uh, but uh, since we are out of time uh, i will not uh, go through these slides one by one let me just give you the this intuition what's a quaternion quaternion is a uh, Alter is an alternative representation of rotations. Normally, I rotate. Uh, I rotate using a three by three matrix. In homogeneous, it will be four by four, but the real content is three by three. Uh, but I can do it with the four four parameters, four in with four dimensions with quaternions. So I am using less space. But more important is the following. Uh, Interpolation of rot uh, quaternions is way easier than interpolation of rotation matrices, which gives you smooth animation. So uh, most of the animations are uh, the rotation components are handled using quaternions. Then, uh, and then I will skip these details like the definition and uh, conversion between quaternion to rotation matrix and vice versa. So. Uh, the rest is about that technical stuff. I am out of time, so I will skip that stuff. And at the very end, I just put this application like the trackball navigation. It is an application of rotation around arbitrary axis. So these axes are defined based on your mouse clicks. And then we do our old uh, rotation around arbitrary axis trick. Uh, okay, so that would be the end of our. Uh, discussion so it is like that